There is a bridge between enterprise and equity value. There is a formula that can be seen from both stakeholders and shareholders side and it allows us to get from enterprise value to equity value. There is a case that makes enterprise value totally unsuitable for value assessment. Also, if you want to know what is a good enterprise value and the formula to use the right multiples, you should follow me for the next five minutes. The enterprise value formula is share price times number of shares plus debt less cash, otherwise known the net debt, or better, the net book value of debt. In other words, the sum of interest bearing debt plus the market value of equity minus cash. A company's enterprise value exceeds its invested capital if investors believe the company will create value. This is the main difference between enterprise and equity value. Enterprise value represents a more comprehensive measure of an organization's value than equity value. So if we want to extract the value of the business attributable to just equity holders, we need to see value from the capitalization perspective. The market value or market cap is based on the stock price, which is inherently an equity value as equity investors values a company's stock excluding debt lenders and other obligations. In a nutshell, the equity value is going to be enterprise value less debt plus cash. As you can see, the concept behind allows us to see this value as, a, as enterprise value or equity value according to our point of view. The formula is the same. Indeed, to convert enterprise value into equity value, you can subtract out debt and other non-equity claims such as, you know, unfunded retirement liabilities, capitalized operating leases and outstanding employee options. Common equity is a residual claimant receiving cash flows only after the company has fulfilled its other contractual claims. Dividing the estimated equity value to the most recent number of shares outstanding allows us to obtain an estimated value per share. The intrinsic value can be compared with other market prices in order to find reasons behind this data, opportunities and risks. By the way, what role is played by value in M&A? In mergers and acquisitions, the transaction value may vary according to the negotiation terms. Enterprise value is usually used when making an offer to acquire business and equity value is what the seller will actually receive. As a result of the deal, the actual purchase price may fall between equity value and enterprise value or may be above it or even below it. In value estimation, goodwill plays a crucial role. It's affected by subjectivity and so it's often calculated in a deductive way as the enterprise value of the target firm less than net value of its assets and liabilities. Take into consideration this, according to Damodaran, this leads to an alteration of comparable multiples that rely on earnings and book value. So, is it better to use enterprise or equity value? It depends on the perspective. When looking at core business operations, stakeholders prefer the enterprise value. While common shareholders prefer to focus on the equity, mostly if they are focusing on the current equity value, otherwise known as market cap. For public companies, current share price times shares outstanding. There are cases in which one or the other metric is not appropriate. For instance, using enterprise value for financial institutions or banks can be totally misleading. The core business of a bank, its debt structure and, you know, the role of interest is not suitable for the idea behind the enterprise value formula. Equity side metrics are better. Also, it's standard practice in private company valuation to reduce value by 20 to 25% to reflect illiquidity. Similar premiums are added to reflect the effects of brand names and other intangibles and emerging market risk. The net result of this adjustment is that the value reflects whatever preconceptions the analyst might have had about the company. In order to compare the performance of one company to another, we are hired by multiples. They can help us to get an immediate appraisal, but we have to integrate both enterprise and equity value with the right metrics, and there is how. If the financial metric is before debt or interest, it's related to enterprise value. An enterprise value multiple, examples, EV to EBIT, 
EV to EBITDA or EV to sales. A financial metric you want to use as the comparable metric is after debt or interest. It must be related to market capitalization. This is a market value multiple. For instance, price to earnings, price to cash earnings or price to book value. On average, it's better to invest in a company with lower enterprise multiple when comparing similar companies. The rule of thumb says that an EV to EBITDA is considered healthy if it's lower than 10. Well, on one end, it's the objective of discounted cash flow valuation to determine the value of an asset based on the cash flow, growth, and risk characteristics of the asset. On the other end, relative valuation is based on current market prices for similar assets, regardless of the way we calculate enterprise value, EBITDA, equity, or other multiples is crucial to understand the enterprise to equity bridge. Moving from a metric unaffected by financing, the EV, to a metric that actually is. Nonetheless, the estimation of growth, prospects, and risk profiles has to be as objective as possible. The personal adjustment has to be minimized and variables of the chosen comparable companies have to be founded on objective criteria. So thank you all so much for watching. Please support the channel, the free content creation. And if you have any questions, feel free to PM me. I'll catch you later.